Hello and welcome to another edition of An English Guy Watching Wrestling. I am the English Guy, I am Nick, thank you so much for clicking on another video, I really do appreciate it. And with that being said, we're going to be covering the AEW Dark Edition from the 30th of March 2021. A bumper edition of AEW Dark, and not surprising, they do it quite often, with that being said, <laughs> let's jump right into it. The opening match was The Butcher and the Blade versus White Chocolate. Now, this was the debut on AW Dark, full stop, for, um, <clears throat> so I've got a bit of a throat thing going on right now, I don't know what's going on, but still, I will survive. <laughs> it was um, their first ever AW Dark, full stop, not a Dark Elevation match, but tag team debut in AW Dark, and they didn't get a chance to get out of the gate because right from the start, the Butcher and the Blade jumped them. I mean, I generally love the Butcher and the Blade because of just how unique of a tag team they are. And to see, they showed a different side to them, which I've never seen before, but I really liked it. I couldn't help but like the aggression they were showing. I think maybe him signing, signing sorry, under the Matt Hardy brand has changed the way they approach things. If that's the case, that's absolutely fine. But I enjoyed this for what it was. A short match, but a match I think that needed <clears throat> to um, solidify what they were about. And that being said, Butcher and the Blade did get some offense against them, but... Butcher and Blade show why they are the Butcher and the Blade and a great tag team, so they won the match. So, there you go. Our next match was Jasmine Law versus Maddie Rankowski. Now, <clears throat> Maddie, I think, is getting a bit more of a push in AW, and that's fine. I've got nothing against that at all. Because I think she's really good. I don't think she's been wrestling very long, to be fair, but you would have guessed it. Maddie's very, very comfortable at the ring, and Jasmine Law, her Fourth match in AEW Dark, I think it's from the says really, did a fine job too. And this was mostly Maddie Rankowski, but a good showing from both women. And I thought they showed some really cool stuff. And I do like Maddie's finisher, the reality check, which is a scissor kick, but not to the back of the, the head or the neck. It was to the, to the actual back of their opponent. That's not something you see very often in wrestling. So innovation was a good thing. But I enjoyed this match. Even though it was only four, just over four minutes, it was a good, fun little match. And... Both of them showed very good, very good promise there, so can't fault that at all. Thumbs up. And this match was Chaos Project versus Dean Alexander and Justin Law. Now, Chaos Project, I've said it before, are one of my favourite tag teams in all of AEW because of just how unique they are. But in this match, they showed a slightly more serious side because those who have seen Chaos Project in the past know that Luther likes to lose and use Serpentico, sorry as a weapon, his own tag team partner. And it's made me laugh a few times, and I feel so bad for Sapensko. But in this match, they didn't do that as much. They did some more focused wrestling on just one guy to keep them in the corner. Old school tag team wrestling, old school tactics, it worked. And for Chaos Project to do that was a bit of an unusual thing to see, but I kind of like to see that. And the fact is they're starting to show a bit more of a serious side is good because the elevation, no pun intended, because obviously they do a very dark elevation too, is going to continue to these two. And I think hopefully it does, because I do like, as I said, I do like the case project. I think they're really good. It was only five minutes and 15 seconds, but it was well, well done. And their opponents, Justin Law and Dean Alexander, did get some offense in. And <clears throat> as of late, AEW have been doing that. Some of the not signed talent. I'm not going to say enhancement talent. I think that's a bit unfair. I'm just going to be um, fair on that. But their opponents, what I say, of the regulars of AEW, are starting to show a bit more of what they could do. And I, I like that. It's all about that progression. So progression progression, third time lucky, <laughs> um, about what they could do. And I enjoyed what they did in this match. So can't call that at all. So keep up that kind of mentality, everyone. So definite thumbs up for that, my friends. And this match was Sunny Kiss versus Angelico. And I saw this one advertised and I thought, oh, this is going to be good. It was good. This was very good. Um, <clears throat> it was only just over, say, six minutes and 39 seconds, but <clears throat> excuse me. But this was a very good match. And Angelico is, I'm going to probably say, one of the most unusual but best submission wrestlers in all of wrestling because of his Navarro, Navarro style. Very hard to combat. And Sunny Kiss, I've said it before, the most athletic wrestler, perhaps on all of AEW, you know, on the male side because of his um, athletic background. This was a fun match and I enjoyed the work rate from both men. And for the Navarro Deathlock to get the win <clears throat> was the right call because. And Angelico has been a bit of a losing streak recently, as much as I don't like to say because I, I love Angelico. Um, 
but I really like Sunny Kiss too. And this was a good, good match. I enjoyed this one. So good showing from both men. Good back and forth action. So what was great to see. But and the Helico getting the win was, I think, the right call. So there you go. Thumbs up. Oh, my phone has decided to do something weird. <clears throat> there we go. <laughs> Next match was Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, and Colt Cabana, as he's very Morales, Bill Cotter, and D3. Now, <clears throat> as per usual, it was a, a Dark Order uh, doing what they do best then, basically dominate their opponents. And that's kind of what they've been doing recently in AEW, but I'm all for it. I love the Dark Order. Simple as that. The most lovable, well liked, and funniest group in all of AEW, to be fair. Um, but that being said, again, they did the old mentality of keeping one man isolated, which is cool. Old school thought process, and it works. And they did get the win when they managed to get <clears throat> all of their finishes on their opponents. And they've been doing that a lot lately. So there you go. The Chicago Skyline finished the match. Cole Cabana getting the win. There you go. And the next match was Adam Priest and Casey Navarro versus Jurassic Express of Marco Stump and Luchasaurus. And it was a short match. It was basically a squash match, to be honest. <laughs> and Jurassic Express got the win. So it was a very, very short match. So there you go. <laughs> this match was Vipers versus Diamante, who is starting to get a bit more of a push in AEW. And I'm so pleased because I really like Diamante. But then again, Vipers. Because he's been in AEW, he's shown some pretty cool stuff too. And <clears throat> even though this is only two minutes and 59 seconds, Diamante showed what she can do more than usual. And <clears throat> I'm all for it. So Vipers did a good job too. But Diamante is trying to show a bit more of her aggressive side, which I really like. And I've been a fan of hers for a long time. But seeing her get a chance in this kind of environment, I absolutely love. So more Diamante getting a push, I'm all for. Vipers did well too. Our next match was Jake St. Patrick, Sage Scott and Chandler Hopkins versus Team Taz of Brian Cage, Ricky Starks and Will Hobbs. And of course, those who've been watching Team Taz lately have kind of noticed a dissension in the ranks after the respect that was shown by Brian Cage to Sting after their street fight at Revolution. But um, it's very unusual to see this, even though Taz is doing commentary saying, it's all good, it's all good. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I think the cracks are starting to appear, but you know what? Sometimes things like this happen in wrestling for trios that have a bit of a... So groups, I won't say trios. Groups have a little bit of an argument, but... <clears throat> um, the Rochambeau being hit by Ricky Starks and then going for the, back to go for the pin. Brian Cage getting the tag and then hitting the drill claw. I don't know. We should see what happens, but there you go. But anyway, Team Taz got the win. Short match, but fun. And the next match was the Jimmy, one of my matches of the night, if I'm one of my if not my match of the night. <clears throat> Big Swole, Red Velvet and Kaiden King versus Vert Vixen, Ashley Vox and Delmi Exo. And I've never seen a six-woman tag match in AEW before. And boy, this was great. It was really, really great. And who says? So pleased to see Ashley Vox and Delmi Exo, the Sea Stars, get their tag team opportunity in AEW. I'm not saying tag team debut because they're part of a trio with Vert with Vixen, who did a very good job, against <clears throat> Big Swole, Red Velvet, and Kyden Ken. Now, Big Swole and Red Velvet have kind of formed a kind of a tag team, so to speak. And I'm all for it. I generally think both are fantastic. And Kyden King, who's starting to show a bit more promise in AEW as well, and I'm all for that, and I really, really like it. <clears throat> um... But for what all six women did, not just the more face tasting, shall we say, of Big Soul, Velvet and Kind and King. The other three did some really good stuff too. And this was really, really, really good. All six women were not afraid to do some very unique things. They weren't afraid to do some high flying. They weren't afraid to do dives. They weren't afraid to go at it in really hard hitting styles, <laughs> wrestling moves. This match had pretty much everything for the short time it had. Only seven minutes and 42 seconds, but this was great, great stuff from all six women and <clears throat> a real step up in the ev evolution of what they're doing as a, like, in the women division. 
this was really, really proof of it. And I will definitely be up for seeing more six women tag matches in AEW in the future. Um, <clears throat> really, really good stuff. And for all the short, short time, limit, time limit it had, it really, really, really impressed. And can't help but love that. Thumbs up, definite thumbs up to all six women for this one. And the next match was <laughs> the most unusual <laughs> match of the night, for sure. Michael Nakazawa versus Mike Magnum. Now, <clears throat> in the past, if you see Michael Nakazawa, you know, he kind of does the baby oil gimmick. He was being corporate Michael Nakazawa, <laughs> talking on his headset, getting messages from backstage in the middle of the match with his headset on. Was entertaining, but I thought this is so weird, but it's also so funny. So <laughs> I enjoyed this. Um, but it was a fun match, it was not the longest match, but I'm not even going to say what the finisher was a tombstone, shall we say? Um, forward facing tombstone, forward slam tombstone, which is kind of unique. <clears throat> well, Mike and Nakazawa got the win in one of the most unusual matches I've ever seen for Mike and Nakazawa, and that's something that's I've seen some weird matches to Michael. But can't fault that. Thumbs up. Our next match was a very unusual match as well. Miro, Baron Black and John Skyler versus Kip Sabian and Miro. If you've been following, Miro is like he's not interested in the match against Best Friends tomorrow. I don't know. He's tagging with um Actually, no, tonight. Today. today at AW Dynamite. Whatever you come to mind. <laughs> um, it was a fun tag match, and Kip Sabian being on the apron, just talking to Penelope the whole match, which is hilarious. Looking at him, you've got this right, you've got this, and Miro just bulldozed both of them because of the mood he's in right now. He looks like the killer that he can be, and a very unusual match, but a fun match, to say the same. And Kip Sabian, I don't think, got one offensive move in the whole match, and Kip Sabian is one of my favourites because he's a fellow Brett. Love him. But the fact is, he just showed another dynamic to what he does, and I love it. So, definitely thumbs up for this one. And next match was the main event, and <clears throat> a joint match of the night for me. Max Caster versus Alex Reynolds in a rare singles outing, because those who know that John Silver is unfortunately injured. But um, this was a very, very good back fourth match between these two, and <clears throat> Max Caster... In singles, or in, he's tagged in with the acclaim. He does so good to watch. And this was no exception. He did some very, very good stuff. Alex Reynolds was also very, very good. But Alex Reynolds has been from day one since I've seen him. This was a very, very good back and forth match. And Max getting the win was the right call, I think, because of the kind of push he's been, the chances he's been getting. And he's been working, making the work because he's very, very good. Even though it was against a Dark Order member, it was a fun match, and I enjoyed this one. And I really think both men showed a lot of promise, and I wouldn't mind seeing these two again. go at it again. I really enjoyed the back and forth fight they had. Obviously, the exchanges they had, it worked so, so well. So, thumbs up for sure. And with that being said, that is it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. I will see everybody very, very soon. But until that time, take care.